vitalities, lifestyle medicine, vital signs. In the very early days of lifestyle medicine and the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, I was practicing in a hospital-based integrative lifestyle uh, medicine clinic and was looking at what the field needed, what we needed clinically. And at this time, the American College of Sports Medicine was pushing exercise as a vital sign. Awesome, that's beautiful, that's how it should be. But why stop at exercise? What about the other lifestyle aspects that the science show are also very, very important for producing either health or producing disease? So that was basically the birth of the concept of lifestyle medicine vital signs as a, as a whole, as a system, if you will. Um, I was very happy to see that concept included in the JAMA Competencies, published in 2010. The question remained, how would we go about designing ideal lifestyle medicine vital signs? And you have to ask some basic questions right up front and make some directional decisions. Are we going to design a lifestyle vital sign system for the benefit of providers, or the healthcare system, or the computer, or are we going to design it primarily for patients, and secondarily for all those other things? And that really changes how you go about it. So you want usability and patient engagement, patient friendliness, if you will, to really be the priority to take precedent over anything and everything else. If you're going to do that for the benefit of patients and usability, what kind of a scale would you use for what you're going to measure? What are people most familiar with? Most people are most familiar with and comfortable with a zero to 10 scale. It's very intuitive, it's very familiar, it's fairly universal. If you're going to use colors, what kind of a color scheme would you use? Green, yellow, red, pretty common, pretty straightforward. And then what would those colors mean? So we think that you would want green to represent you are physiologically in disease reversal territory. Based on the science, we fully expect disease regression to be going on with that aspect. Yellow, caution, danger, there's cause for concern. You're not going to necessarily be reversing disease. You may be facilitating disease. And red is pretty obvious and universal, indicating you're putting gasoline on the fire, like a red gas can. Gas on the fire, you're fueling disease. It's a wrecking ball. And you want this to be as scientifically accurate as possible, but not at the expense of usability. So how do you take the science, reflect that into this zero to 10 for those different color-coded purposes? So, primarily patient-centric, but who else would be using this? You have to think through all the users, all the stakeholders, if you will. What if you wanted it to be a universal system, used by patients, by providers, by employers, by people making smartphone apps and tracking devices? What if it might be used by an insurance company or to determine how much you pay for your healthcare benefits? What we really need is a universal metric, a universal dashboard that we can follow over time. That just like the dashboard in your car is telling you how is your health engine running? Is this going just fine, humming along, or are we on the road to trouble? Do we have something going out right now? We need a simple, user-friendly, health-oriented dashboard. It's universal for everyone. One of the strengths of modern medicine is evidence-based process. What can we demonstrate in controlled conditions and understand to be how reality works, and then do things in harmony with that to get the best result? Well, if the evidence shows that lifestyle factors are the primary drivers of disease in the modern world, and we're not assessing or addressing them on a regular basis, can we claim to be practicing evidence-based medicine? I don't think so or if it's evidence-based, it's just the evidence between pill A and pill B, we really need to apply the evidence to the bigger picture and practice a model and a framework of care that gets our hands around the causes of disease and not just the downstream symptoms. Now, what would you include in this system? What would the priorities be? 
you want to put in things in this system that are things that are under a person's control. They're not going to change their gender, at least not most of them. They're not going to be able to change their age. You're going to have factors that are things like body mass index, percent body fat, lipids, secondary measures. Those are all important. They have their place, but they're not something you can directly control day to day as part of lifestyle. So you would want to put in things, obviously, like diet and exercise. But would you stop there? Mm, sleep is pretty important. What else is important? And what can we pull apart in terms of the direct drivers, like diet and exercise, versus the indirect or upstream drivers that the science shows makes this difference that changes our behaviors, but are not the behaviors themselves? Again, think of the neuron model and where those actions on the superficial level come from meaning upstream. We also want to think in terms of MVP, in other words, minimal viable product. This needs to be very streamlined. This needs to be something you can actually use in clinical practice as vital signs in the busy medical system that we have. So it can't take up much time or energy in this process. And then there are the challenges of figuring out on this zero to 10 scale, what's a two, what's a four, what's an eight? relative to the science and putting those in practical, easy to understand terms to help people know where they're at relative to points on the scales. That in and of itself does a lot for patient education and learning where they're at relative to what the science shows. At some point, we'll probably need a book on this and explain this more fully to people, but the tool always has to stay super simple, single page. Our current page is front and back. Half page on one side is the basic tool, one and a half pages explanation for the first time or two. So what does this look like in practice? Is this really doable? So the way we've been doing this in my own practice is patients fill this out as they're checking in. Now the first time it may take them 10 minutes. They may have to sort of read it, get a feel for what's going on, know where they fall on the scales. Second time, maybe five minutes. After that, it's like a minute or two. And again, they're now engaging in a framework and a process that's fundamentally different for healthcare. The most important part, again, is not provider benefit. It's not data, it's not tracking. The most important thing that you're doing is engaging your patients in this different kind of healthcare. It's a functional, understandable framework for their health engine and how they are managing it. It is also setting expectations. If I, as a provider, think these things are really important, that every patient needs to fill this out every time they check in, that's telling them, this is really important. We're gonna use this, this is meaningful. And we're making lifestyle part of, tangibly part of, real medicine. It's not just nice lip service. Now, this also gets into issues of efficiencies. If I sit down with a patient, and there's no preamble, there's no context for talking about lifestyle, I'm starting from ground zero. I've got to get rolling, get things on the table, start the discussion, versus they've already filled this out. It's already on their radar. They've had to think through this, figure out where they're at in the last week. It is all teed up for us to then look at their conditions and say, why don't we start with treating the cause? We can see on your dashboard what the likely causes are and what we, what we potentially could do about it. And of course, this is as they are ready and able to start making those changes, working with them, supporting them, not dictating to them. And yes, there will be all kinds of uses for data and tracking over time, comparing with costs, disease outcomes, research, and so forth. And actually, that's a big part of where we intend to go with this. Having this be a living, breathing, growing, developing system, and not just a simple zero to 10 set of eight things. Now, what would you call it? Lifestyle medicine vital signs. And again, keep in mind it's primarily for patient benefit, not my benefit. We're fundamentally measuring things in a positive sense, things that promote, that create, sustain health. It is toward the purpose of our existence, happy, full living which is the concept of vitality. So how about vitality signs? Okay, that's good, I like that. What is our shorthand term for our typical 
conventional vital signs? Well, we call it vitals. So why don't we call vitality signs vitalities? We give to you vitalities, lifestyle medicine vital signs. This will be a living, breathing system. It will be used in many different ways, in many different contexts over time, not just once in a while at the doctor's office.